What's up, guys, and welcome to my review for Challengers. This is directed by Luca Guadagnino, who's directed recent films like Bones and All, starring Timothy Chalamet, and Call Me By Your Name, starring Timothy Chalamet. And this stars Zendaya, Josh O'Connor, and Mike Feist in a love triangle tennis match that will, I'm sure, get a lot of butts in the seats because this movie has some tension. It does certainly have some tension. Now, going into this, I thought the trailers looked incredible. Luca Guadagnino is a director I am kind of hit or miss with. I think Call Me By Your Name, he didn't overdo it with his style. I think Bones and All, he over not overdid it, but I, I just think that that movie's not as good as it probably could have been. The screenplay needed some work, but... Call Me By Your Name is definitely a good film's Best Picture nominee, and it's a it's a Best Screenplay uh, winner at the Oscars. So going into this, I was like, okay, as a director, he's kind of hit or miss with me. And with this film, is it a hit? Is it a miss? It's a hit, but barely. And that is solely on the directing. It's barely a hit with the directing. And I think that the acting, is terrific. I think Zendaya is fantastic, and she is especially great in the tennis scenes. I mean, she really pulls it off, and she seems like she should be a pro tennis player. Even though she's not in the film, she really pulls it off like she could be. Mike Feist, I think, is very good. He's from Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. I think he's better in that film than he is in this film, but he's good in this film. The kind of character that he's playing, you feel really bad for, and he's really sympathetic. So he doesn't really have a lot of, you know, an opportunity to be his own person. He's just kind of, I feel like he's being taken under the wing of Zendaya's character or Josh O'Connor's character, who I think was the standout of the film. Even though as the film continued to go on, I didn't like that character. And by the end of the movie, I kind of despised that character. But his performance was fantastic. And I think that he should be the one that, if anybody gets a nomination from this film, it's Josh O'Connor. I think the attention will probably go to Zendaya, but I think Josh O'Connor was fantastic in this movie. Even though, like I said, by the end of the film, you hate the character. I did anyway. Um, I think that the cinematography was very good. I thought the tennis stuff looked great, especially the shots that are really, you know, it, it's really good stuff. I can't really explain it, but if you watch the film, a lot of the tennis is, is done really well. There's a lot of tennis in the film, and I think it was handled very well, and the sound as well. The sound design, I thought, was, was, was pretty good, too. Where the film, you know, falters for me is the third act. I'll say the first and second act, I was like, okay, I really like it, and I'm really into this movie, and I'm kind of loving it, actually. I'm really entertained by this sort of love triangle and these friends that become enemies, almost, and just the, the relationships that all these people have together. I thought that aspect of it was really well done. And with Luca Guadagnino's style is not, you know, the forefront, and he's letting these characters breathe, and he's letting the story play out, I think that's where the movie is at its strongest, when he's subtly directing. But I think he really went to town in the editing room in the third act of the movie. All of a sudden, there's an overabundance of slow motion that I was like, oh my god, what am I watching right now? The third act of this movie, the last... 20 minutes or so of this film is bad. I was not satisfied by the ending. I didn't like the ending. I wish that instead of giving us all that over-stylized slow motion, we should have played things out at a regular speed and given us an extra five minutes with the characters just to see where we're going. Look, you're setting up this kind of story. There's more story to tell here. Um, there is a lot more story to tell. Maybe not a lot, but there's certainly more story to tell. There is no finality. There is no finality, I didn't feel like. Because Mike Feist's character, you want to see this guy succeed. 
I mean, he is the only really good-hearted character in the movie. Zendaya's doing some shifty stuff, and the other guy's doing some shifty stuff. But Mike Feist, I mean, he's, he's, he's like a deer in headlights the whole film. By the end of it, you go, well, what's, what's going to happen? Is this guy going to get his due? I mean, I, I just don't know. I, I want to see him make the right decisions, and I want to see him stand up for himself, where he doesn't really get to do that in the movie. So that was kind of disappointing, and the, the ending was disappointing. But the rest of it, I was, I was into the first and second act. Look, the movie's not told in a linear way. I think that it bounces around time a lot. Did the movie need to be told like that? I don't think so. But other than Luca Guadagnino's direction and influence over the third act of the movie, other than that, almost completely derailing the film for me, and that Mike Feist's character wasn't really given his due by the end of the film, uh, you know, other than that stuff, the only really other negative I have to say about the film is the score. The score in this film, a lot of the times, it felt like it was intrusive. Honestly, that it doesn't even have to do with the score, because the score, I think, is is good. I guess I would say it's more to do with the placement of the score. It, it tried to bump up the tension a little bit when I feel like that what was going on on screen was doing that enough. So you didn't need this extra noise in the background. And unfortunately... That's what the score became a lot of the time. Even though it was not a bad score, it became loud noise because it was misplaced in a lot of places. So with all that being said, I liked the film. I didn't love the film. Didn't like the ending. Loved the performances. And at the end of the day, yeah, I'm going to give it three and a half out of five stars. I liked it more than Bones and All. I'll say that. This is, I don't think, as good as Call Me By Your Name. So that's where I'm at with Challengers. Guys, comment down below. Did you see the film? What did you think about it? Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We got a bunch of reviews for films that just came out on digital. You can buy them now. It's Monkey Man, Love Lies Bleeding. It's going to be available soon. Arthur the King, a bunch of other stuff on the way. So definitely come on back. Check the reviews out for those. Also, we got a bunch of reviews up on the channel. New reviews for Spider-Man 2. We've got a poster I just got from the movie theater over here. Saw that Monday night. Got a review, 20th anniversary review for that. Also reviewed Immaculate, Late Night with the Devil. A bunch of other stuff. Come on back. Check that out. And guys, you can follow me on Twitter and or X at RyanKing72 and Instagram and TikTok at KingArises131. That's been it for me. Thank you so much for watching my review for challengers. And until next time, over and out.